Yo what's guys, Bryce here and we're back at it again for another video and in this video I'm going to be doing a track guide of Charlotte Roval. This track is about 2.2 miles long, it has 16 corners and this track has a lot of configurations but this is the normal Roval configuration, it has a cool infield section and it is a pretty quick lap time uh, around the low 115s or even 14s depending on the track temperatures you're running a lot of big curbs you have to be careful with them and a lot of double apexes and just corners are where you really need to uh, optimize the exit so without further ado let's get into a uninterrupted lap and then we'll show you a in-depth track guide Alright, so let's get right into this. Charlotte Roval in particular is just really tricky because all of the curbs are ginormous, so you really just have to be careful on um, the curbs that you do take. But let's get right into this track guide. So going down into turn one, I'm going to be playing the laps in slow motion with the telemetry because the telemetry does not work uh, fully when you're kind of going reverse, and I'll kind of break it down. Then we'll go back and go like frame by frame. So going down to the turn one, we're breaking at the 200 meter board just a little bit, kind of maintaining that break. And then we're going to hit the apex nicely. Just kiss it. And then we're going to be carrying the speed um, outward. So we'll go back and kind of break that down just a little bit. I'm um, not spend too much time here. So again, going down to turn one, we are initially going on the brakes right before the 200 meter board. Um, so I use the two. I think it's 200, but I use that two as a brake marker. And then going into the corner, stay on the right wall. Right after the one is what I'm where I'm turning in. Um, you can use a little bit more curb, but... I usually just like to kiss this inside curb like that. That blue curb on the inside is going to unsettle the car. But you can, you know, fool around with different lines. I really haven't honestly tried to use a whole lot of curb on the inside. I just find that you can carry a lot of speed when all four tires are planted on the ground. And then this will lead you up to this wall. Now, the wall is a little bit weird because you can see, um, especially when you're driving, it sort of comes in at you really fast. Um, so you want to be careful here. And then... You can look at our steering input. We're still steering. Like we're always steering off the gas till about 70%. So 70% off the gas. And um, this is really as low as you need to go. I've heard that in the BMW, you can um, almost go flat out on like a low fuel tank. So it all depends on your car. Fool around with it. Try to go through here flat out and then slowly release the gas so you can find a nice margin. I'm going 72% and then boom, back up to throttle at 100%. Um, as soon as I can. So here, and then here, back up to 100% throttle. Really, the uh, turn three, you want to be to the left, um, so you can kind of swing the car in. So I wouldn't go too far to the right, coming out of two. And then here, we're going to the left, and then instantly just flick that car in. And um, you could get a little bit closer to the curb on the right. Um, this is nowhere near a perfect lap, but it was still pretty good. Um, so. You can use a little bit more curb on the inside, but I particularly did that so I can go for more of a later apex on the second curb. Um, here, on this corner here, you can use uh, this track on the left and go pretty far out. I find that you don't really want to go all the way. Just about here is pretty good, and it's really a tricky corner because it's a double apex. I love double apex corners because it requires you um, to kind of think about the line, and really, um, the corner that you want to maximize the exit is this corner right here, turn four. So you can see we're getting nice and tight on the inside here, and that's what you want because then that's going to bring you to 
um, the next sequence of corners. So I'll play that again in slow motion, and then we'll move on to turn five. So to the left, uh, downshift down to third, a little bit of brake just kind of stabilize the car, coasting through here, um, stabilizing the car, and then we're going to get on the throttle nice and aggressive there and use the throttle to sort of rotate the car. And you can use all of this track on the left as well. Um, no track limits there, a little weird, but you can use all of this track on the left. Going down to turn five, this corner is really tricky. You can see the curb on the right. So what I'm doing is I'm going into the corner and then you can see the blue curb where it's pointed. That's where I'm going to be pointing my car and I'm going to be going on the brakes. Um, most of my braking is done here and I'm turning at the same time and using the brakes to uh, rotate the car. So braking, most braking I'm doing there, bring it to the left and use the brakes to rotate the car for another right hander and you can see i'm getting pretty close to this wall on the inside you can get a little bit closer um as well but the tighter you are the slower you're going to be going so it's just really all about compromises but this is where i place the car again this is the line that i take um and what i found to give me the lap time that i want so i'm um, going through here brakes again to just rotate the car just that slight bit and i'm using this much curb on the inside and then the car is going to naturally drift out wide and then from here i usually keep it tight for this left curb. You don't want to go too far to the right and swing it back to the left. You're going to be losing way too much time. And you can even carry that much speed if you do that because you're going to have to brake pretty hard. This corner, uh, seven and eight, really difficult. You don't want to stay really tight to those blue cones because you want to open up eight. You want to open up eight as much as you can. So you can see I'm tracking on this blue line. And then once the blue line goes away from me, from the car, uh, that's when I'm going to be going to this wall over here. And then once I'm at the wall over here, I'm going to be breaking some more to rotate the car. And then same thing if you watch the Zolder alternate track guide. You want to be staring at that wall, um, that white wall right there. And you can carry a lot more speed than you think you can here because the track will open up a whole lot. And you'll be able to utilize the banking to um, turn the car in. And, that's, and the banking is really crucial because you can use the banking to turn the car. So I'm going here. Once I hit this curb, I'm turning in. I don't waste any time trying to set up this corner. I just make it one smooth flowing corner and I'm full throttle and I take this all the way out to the banking on the right. And um, then from here, I'm pretty much just going down low on the banking, fast way around here. And then this will take you down to turn 10, 11, 12, and 13. So. I'm braking right in between the two and the three. Um, I'm just going to be careful here because you can outbreak yourself really easily. And the, the turn uh, 10 is really sharp, actually. Um, and you want to utilize a lot of this curb on the inside. So we'll watch this here. Braking down past the 100 uh, meter board. Quite past it, actually. I'm turning. And you probably turn a little bit sooner. Um, but I'm using a lot of curb here. So you'll see that blue uh, ginormous curb. There's two of them. I aim for the first one that's closest to you. And then the same thing for this one. I just aim for that first one that's closest to you. And um, so here I'm getting kind of a mid apex here. And then this one is really where I'm aiming to get that late apex first gear. I short shift to second. And then um, the car will be bouncing around a lot. And then you can carry all that speed through there. We we'll just play it one more time. So you can see that slowly releasing of the brake on the throttle here. Release of the throttle. A little bit of brake to get the car rotated. Use the curb on the right. Um, short shift to second and get as close as you can to that wall on the left. You're going to be definitely hitting that a few times. That's what I did. And then um, you can go here to gain a little bit of time because you're shortening the distance. And then back on the banking again. You can go on the inside there all the way down low, but you're going to lose a lot of time coming out of the banking because the banking um, does help you carry more momentum and speed into the next sequence of corners. This track is actually pretty short. It's a very short track um, because it's so fast. So going into here... There's AstroTurf on the left. You can use the AstroTurf. I want you to be using this uh, AstroTurf because that can really help you open up the corner. It's not grass. It's not unstable. And then going to this corner, um, I would keep it in third gear. I'm in second, but I did short shift to third. And third gear, you will be carrying more speed because um, it's a pretty fast corner. I'm approaching like at 80 miles an hour. So it's a decently fast corner. A lot of curb on the inside of 15. And then for 16, um, you can definitely use a lot more curb on that um, corner right there. You can definitely use a lot more curb on this on this corner. Just didn't utilize it as much. And again, I wanted to keep all four wheels planted on the track. So you can use that curb there, pin the throttle, 
and um, this will bring you out to here. But you can tell that I could have carried a little bit more speed because when I went out, I basically had room to kind of adjust the car. So track is really tricky, really fun track too. I've honestly enjoyed this track a lot. Um, my quickest lap was a 15-1 and we're running track temperatures of 82 degree track temperatures. So um, in higher temperatures, I think anywhere in the 16s is really good. Um, and then if you can get into those 15s in the low 15s, um, maybe that can be like a benchmark that you want to chase. Um, but yeah, I haven't done any low fuel loads or anything like that. This is just high downforce, um, setup. So low 15s is where I'm at. And then that's kind of like a benchmark where you can aim for. <clears throat> so last thing here is I'm just going to show you guys this other lap that I did. And I use the brakes a little bit more to rotate the car going into five. Um, show you really quickly. I use the brakes to rotate the car in and I was just a slight bit quicker You can see how much more tight I am on this inside uh, wall here So fool around the line see what works good for you what car you have um, But this I didn't complete this lap because I did make a little mistake towards the end But you can see how much I use the brakes there to rotate the car and here I was definitely a little bit better on the throttle on this particular lap So as you can see here with the throttle on this lap, I'm always maintaining throttle. I never go off the throttle 30% and then boom shoot back up to 100 if you can do that you'll be really fast Going to those corners we get really close to the wall there on the outside. That's how you should be Taking that corner you should be going so fast that there's no room on the outside of the wall and you're on the limit um, That pretty much just means that you are going faster on there and here you'll see the mistake I made what happens when you um, Just carry a little bit too much speed um, Turned in a little bit earlier trying different lines not as much curb on the right as I could uh, on the left, the right curb was good, but you can see we're carrying too much speed and boom, just a little bit too much uh, wall there on the left. But that is pretty much going to be it for the Charlotte Roval track guide. I'll be racing here in the North American Racing League in about a few days time. Once this video has posted, so you can check that out and you'll see the highlights posted on my channel shortly too. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this. If you did, leave a like down below. A lot more track guides coming soon as I plan to hopefully do all of them. Uh, in iRacing, it's going to be a long journey, but that's going to be it for me. See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.